Dear Compass course participants, hello again and welcome to the fifth and the last lecture of Sustainable Architecture and Energy Management module. So, my name is Jelena Radošević and as I've previously mentioned, my professional focus is on water and material cycles and how they are and can be influenced by different society-nature interactions. Today, I will be guiding you through an overview of the topic of sustainable waste management in converged or retrofitted public buildings. What is waste? According to the Waste Framework Directive, waste is absolutely any substance or object which the holder discards, intends to discard or is required to discard. It is produced in all of the branches of modern human activity, in all sorts of industries, construction work and agriculture, as well as public services and everyday life activities in households. Waste produced in public buildings is considered to be a part of so-called municipal solid waste. Municipal solid waste is defined differently by different institutions in the world, which reflects on different waste management practices. For example, all of all hereby presented definitions, only the Pan American Health Organization's definition includes hospital waste in municipal solid waste. Hospital waste is partially hazardous. This means that a part of it contains pathogens, toxic and even nuclear substances and that municipal management practices are taking that into consideration too. Hazardous waste comes in the smallest quantities. But if it is not disposed of properly, separately from the rest of the waste, it will contaminate all of the waste. Municipal solid waste accounts for 10 to 25 percent of the total waste mass. If it is estimated that around 1.3 billion tons of municipal solid waste are produced annually worldwide, Calculate how much of total waste is that? A lot. <laughs> of course, waste production is unequally distributed in the world. On this map, you can see that the USA, Norway, Ireland, Switzerland are amongst the biggest producers of waste per person per day. Countries of Western Balkans and the most of African countries are some of the countries that produce the least waste per day per person. Nevertheless, global waste production is still growing and the question is, what with all that waste? Where with all that waste? How to avoid being buried under the waste we ourselves produce? And how come we produced so much waste in the first place? Let's take a look at nature. How come there is no waste in the nature, in natural ecosystems? It seems that discards of one natural process are inputs of another. Hmm, wait a minute. Maybe this waste can be used for something. To produce something new. Maybe, just maybe, it's not worthless piece of trash. Maybe it's actually a valuable resource for all kinds of stuff we need, renewable and easily accessible, and it can help us reduce the pressure on limited natural resources. This mind switch triggered the concepts of modern sustainable waste management and circular economy. While traditional waste management is focused only on waste generation, collection and disposal, sustainable waste management is an interdisciplinary concept that sees the bigger picture, the limits of natural resources and opportunities in waste as a resource. The overall objective of sustainable waste management is benefit from as much of waste as possible in a manner that does not endanger human health or harm the environment and consequent reduction and even elimination of waste as such.
In practice, modern sustainable waste management is based on so-called waste hierarchy, which sets the following priority order of managing waste. Prevention Reuse Recycling Recovery and, as the least preferred option, disposal. This is the path that will enable achievement of the EU Waste Framework Directive's targets to be achieved by the year 2020. 50% of certain waste materials from households and other origins similar to households reused and recycled, and 70% of construction and demolition waste reused, recycled and recovered. The directive requires that all member states adopt waste management plans and waste prevention programs. Sustainable conversion of public buildings contributes to both targets of the EU Waste Framework Directive, as sustainable waste management is practiced during the retrofit, reconstruction of the building itself, as well as during its intended use. In other words, words of engineers, Sustainable waste management is practiced in two phases of the building retrofit, construction and demolition, so-called C&D phase, and operation and maintenance, O and M phase. While rebuilding, reconstructing a public building, previously used construction material can be used. Construction and total or partial demolition of buildings, civil infrastructure, road planning and maintenance produces so-called construction and demolition C and D waste. In this type of waste there are a lot of materials that can be reused and recycled in building construction and retrofit. For instance, concrete, cardboard, metals, plastic, carpets and so on. A good idea, time and money saver, is sorting different types of CND waste into separate containers immediately on site of origin and reusing and recycling them at the same or at a nearby location. Another option is also selling this material. There really are public buildings in the world built from reused and recycled CND waste as well as from other types of waste. One example is Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation campus in the US. Another is Brighton Waste House in the UK. So let's take a closer look and follow the link on Brighton Waste House. As space influences the behavior of people in it, enables stimulates or obstructs certain actions, it is important to think about sustainable waste management while designing a retrofitted building inclined to this kind of waste management. For example, an architect must in this case predict what will be the most common types of waste produced in the building and determine appropriate size, number and location of waste containers as well as appropriate access to them the location of a composter and adjacent fruit and vegetable garden and etc. So, what kind of waste is mostly produced in public buildings? Hmm? Don't remember what kind of buildings are public ones? Let's re We define public buildings as buildings owned and managed by public authority for public purposes, providing public services to a large number of people. So, of course, the principles of sustainable waste management in public buildings can be applied to commercial buildings as well, and to residential buildings with some adjustments. Once the public building has been retrofitted and put into intended use, let's see what could be the most common things we could find in its waste bins. And how to prevent, reduce the amount of waste produced? Take a look at the advice. 
Promotion of these and many other similar advices will contribute to waste generation prevention and reduction. The waste that is produced is exploited as a source of material or energy in processes of recycling and energy recovery. Public buildings usually do not have infrastructure for waste incineration or similar waste to energy technology, so the focus here will be on recycling. According to the EU Waste Framework Directive, recycling is any recovery operation by which waste materials are reprocessed into products, materials or substances, whether for the original or other purposes excluding energy recovery and landfilling. The most used symbol for recycling is, probably you've seen it everywhere, the Mobius loop. Three twisted chasing arrows in a triangle that represent actually three phases of recycling. Collecting waste, previously or later sorted into fractions that differ by waste type and nature. The second, processing of each type of waste and manufacturing new products. And third, purchasing new products made from recycling materials. Institutions can contribute to recycling in a public building by purchasing products made from recycled materials, placing adequate number of waste bins on easily accessible locations around the building, composting on the premises and using the homemade compost in the garden, appointing an employee responsible for matters of recycling and sustainable waste management, and so on. Here is an example of sustainable waste management practice in one institution and some of the results achieved. Drop of paper use in a period of six years. You can see that it's nearly double. If an institution is acquiring goods, services or works from an external source, it is often by the act of procurement. In other words, the institution publishes what kind of goods or services it requires and under which conditions. The providers of these goods and services send their offers and the institution chooses one of them according to criteria previously announced. These are usually the price, specific technology and the quality. If the institution wants to consider environmental impact of the goods or services, the procurement is considered a green one. Read more about green public procurement on Global Development Research Center site and in Buying Green. OK, so now the institution conducts green procurement, has contracts with waste collection and disposal firms, has bins all over the place, a composter too. But it all might not work if employees working in this public building are not behaving in concord with sustainable waste management and are not aware of the reasons why are they instructed to behave in a certain way. Here is where education and popularization of sustainable waste management comes in. Workshops, seminars, any kind of constructive communication, even this webinar. In the end, I would like to share with you the story of stuff, which talks about stuff in the context of economy and politics, to broaden the view a little bit. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you will incorporate this knowledge in your work as well as in your personal life.